Okay, it's, uh, I think we're gonna have a long meeting tonight. We've got some things to talk about. So why don't we go ahead and get started and then um, uh, just told the girls that Kim is not, won't be joining us tonight. So we're only waiting for Justin, but occasionally he comes in a little bit later anyway. Uh, Eric, are you there? I'm here. Okay, um, I'm wondering about Anthony. Yes, I'm wondering about Anthony Tintera. Is he coming? We will rearrange our agenda if he is. He doesn't appear to be here. Um, when I had talked to him, he said that he had another meeting that he would have to get to kind of maybe towards the end, depending on our timing, but he's not here right now, so I assume he's right. not We'll here. just go on. If he shows up, um, sometimes I can't see all of the, um, you know, the visual part here of every member. So um, you let me know and we can, you know, kind of amend our agenda to fit his needs or whatever, depending upon where we are. Okay, our Town of Canandaigua Environmental Conservation Board meeting is now in session. And our first uh, order of business was to introduce a guest if he was coming and this would be Mr. Pinto. Oh, whoops, we've got a flag. So our first order of business is our Pledge of Allegiance. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. For our neighbors to the north. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. And to them too. And one chorus of old O Canada. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, okay. So uh, all right. So our guest, when he does appear, if he does appear, is Anthony Tintera. He is uh, with Meager Engineering and he represents the Sweatland application. So this is a uh, quite an interesting and important application, um, and we'll be getting to that. Uh, we may amend the agenda, and when he comes on board, just so I know there's going to be a long conversation with this, so um, if we'll just wait until that time. Our next order of business, then, is um, the approval of the minutes of April the 3rd and October the 1st. You should have both gotten both of those. And if you had any additions or anything that you would like to respond to, corrections? Nothing? Okay, may I have a motion please to approve both minutes? So move. Um, all in second. favor? Oh, I get to get a second, I'm sorry. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, the minutes have been moved. So, report from the development office, Eric. We're looking for information from our previous uh, applications. We can do it quickly. There's quite a few of them. We were busy last time. Eric. Yeah. yeah okay. You're on. Um, the mobile road application. Yeah, the mobile road application um, was continued. The zoning board. I uh, wanted to have a more clear idea of what the future plans were for the parcel and how that road would connect Mobile Road with the potential future road. Uh, the 3411 Westlake Boulevard application, they shrank the side setback request to down to two feet. I think what you guys had seen was a request for a six foot setback and they shrank it back down to a 10 foot setback request. Mm -hmm. um, that was approved by the zoning board uh, and approved by the planning board. I was relatively surprised. The planning board conditions on it were that it wouldn't be approved or there wouldn't be permitted, signed off until uh, the proper DEC permits were granted. And their landscape architect did provide more detail um, at the later meetings about how um, the tree would be protected and whatnot during construction. Oh, good. Um, the Bobri application. 
uh, I apologize, I'm trying to think of which one this was. Oh, um, this one was approved. I don't think there were many issues, but it was just a small yeah. addition on the house. Um, the Tate application, uh, this one was also approved. Um, I think that they looked at different landscaping um, and stormwater at the planning board, but I don't think there was any major conditions placed on it. Uh, the Metro's application, this was also approved by the planning board. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the conditions related to their conservation plan of that open space parcel um, and how that would be maintained along with the stormwater and everything. Uh, the dagger application was just a, a sketch review. Um, looks like Mr. Tintera is joining us. Um, so there was no real decision on that one. And uh, Tony from Mahar Engineering should be on the line, although it doesn't look like his audio or his microphone is connected just yet. Eric, can you elaborate a little bit? And then uh, for what? Um, um, the, the, the metros, um, I think we made some suggestions about the um, the conservation easement and, or, or had some questions anyway about um, how that property would be owned and maintained. Did, did that get turned into a condition of approval? So they have to create, um, I apologize, I, I, I wasn't at this meeting. John can maybe correct me where I'm wrong in any of this, but they do have uh, that the management plan has to be approved um, prior to it being signed. Uh, I know from reading the minutes there was a healthy discussion about how it would be maintained in the long run. So it was a, is, it, and it was, like a, it's, right. and it was a separate parcel that had access to that to the main road going in. Right. Is that how they did that? Okay. No, they didn't put it on the, yep. put it into the um, 10th um, lot for the housing. Okay, that's good. Right. And what about the dagger one? Um, I mean, did they generally encourage that site plan or did they discourage it? What, what was the outcome? Uh, John, again, maybe you can help out with this one. From my reading of the minutes, it sounded like they were generally okay with that layout where there was kind of the open space that was like in between the driveways. Again, there was a bit of a question about how those driveways would be maintained, um, but that they didn't sound like they were particularly opposed to the layout. Is that right, John? Overall, they liked this layout the best of everything they've seen so far. They just have they... to work out the uh, conservation areas because they're split up in so many different little spots. So they have to work that out. But overall, they like the, uh, it's only a few houses. It's only, a, it's a dead end street with a cul-de-sac and the neighbors didn't have too much more to say about it. There's much less traffic and the, the board liked this one the best. And what about the conservation um, area, the woods, the 14 acres or whatever many acres it is of woods? Did they choose or did they mention or talk about, um, you know, parceling that off into its own parcel and or, or how did they talk about that aspect of the application? The, the large piece is to be annexed to another property and they, so far it's not a conservation area, it's just a piece of property to be annexed to another property. Conservation area will be among the, the homes in the subdivision somehow. They have to figure out, because there's so many little spaces of it, how to, how to make that into a conservation area that can be enforced and so on. Okay, any other questions? Okay, um, is uh, Mr. Tintero with us now? Eric or not? 
it looks like he's one of our participants. If he can unmute himself, there he is. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me just fine? Yes, we can hear you just fine. Can you hear us? Yes. Okay, fine. Um, uh, to the board, this is Anthony Tintero with, uh, uh, is it Meager? Do you call it Meager or Mayor? It's a Mahar, actually. Oh, Mahar, engineering. He's representing the Sweatland application. Okay, then our, we're going to amend our agenda to accommodate your appearance, and we will um, talk about that now. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. We'll get back to the uh, rest of your agenda. Pull up the site plan, Tony. If you, uh, yep, that's uh, it. If you can walk us through what's being proposed. All right, so our client, Jim Sweatman, is interested in developing a majority of the parcel at 4015 West Lake Road, uh, specifically the portion of the parcel between Onalinda Drive and West Lake Road, County Road number 16. Uh, there's already uh, quite a bit of development that already exists by Canandaigua Lake already, uh, namely an existing uh, boathouse like structure, the uh, covered boat hoist and dock, and a, a small shed, uh, along with a good deal of impermeable area uh, from the walkway leading down and the pavement uh, alongside West Lake Road. Uh, that being said, the majority of the parcel that's being developed is uh, on land that has a greater than 10% slope. Uh, it generally uh, is not as steep by Onalinda Drive, and as such, we propose to situate a the, the proposed footprint of the home, uh, which is uh, being designed by Pat Morabito with Morabito Architects uh, by Onalinda Drive and to have the access off of Onalinda Drive. Uh, initially in the project, we confirmed with Ontario County's um, <clears throat> uh, County Highway Superintendent that access off of both Onalinda Drive and Westlake Road would be inappropriate. So uh, what we have decided, sorry, uh, decided to propose to the, to all boards in the town of Canandaigua is uh, the access for their uh, accessory boat vehicles and uh, uh, typical vehicles off of Onalinda Drive with the park in and a walking path leading down from the garage region to the northwest, uh, meandering down along the back side of the house before doubling back and coming back together with Westlake Road. Uh, ultimately, this would help connect the western portion of the site to the eastern portion of the site, where uh, a majority of the development already exists. Uh, given the town of Canandaigua's stormwater uh, management criteria. What we have also shown is a region in the central location of the site, which would handle uh, a lot of the new stormwater runoff coming from the impermeable region of the house, the impermeable region of the driveway, uh, as well as impermeable area from the proposed walkway. Uh, this infiltration practice is proposed uh, in that central location where uh, additionally, there is a uh, lower patio area shown as well. Um, aside from the drainage consideration, we show utilities <clears throat> uh, for water, for electric, and for a sanitary sewer hookup, uh, which we've been in contact with uh, Town of Canandaigua Sewer District's Don Havens uh, with regard to that. Uh, he currently has no comments, um, but if uh, any sort of adjustment would have to happen to the plans, we would ultimately run them past him again. And I believe, uh, well, aside from that, uh, worth mentioning is that the drainage structures that we have in place include that central infiltration practice and uh, redundant infiltration practices uh, before Westlake Road, where uh, runoff from the site would infiltrate through those practices instead of reaching Westlake Road, just because um, the existing sites located to the west, uh, largely there is a drainage area that 
drains directly towards our parcel before draining directly towards Westlake Road. Okay. Uh, anything else, uh, Eric, that you'd like to add in, ex in explanation of the application? Eric? Hello? <laughs> I'm sorry, I had myself muted. Um, I, I said, is there anything to else? To whatever extent you guys are concerned, it does need a, yeah, so it does need a use variance um, from the zoning board. That's perhaps the biggest obstacle to get over at this point, I think. Um, they do have it's a, a small dwelling down here that you know probably isn't going to be a principal dwelling for anybody, and that's why they want to put put that on the other side. But the town does not allow two dwelling units on one lot. Okay, um, a couple of things I'd like to interject into the review is uh, not only a review of the steep slope law, um, as far as well the retaining wall but other things that are happening on the property especially the disturbance area which is the whole darn thing and then also um the ridgeline guidelines and to see i would ask that the that the planner um look at the ridgeline guidelines and determine they are applicable with this application because of the steep slopes and the way that the the location where the house is being built also there are um some issues in this in the ridge line which uh, would mitigate some of the which would need to mitigate uh, perhaps some of the disturbance that we're talking about especially at the top of the property um, towards the west uh, as far as the disturbance area is concerned so that should i think should be in our it should be reviewed before too much longer Okay, are there any other uh, areas or questions that we'd like to get to before we go to Sarah Linda's review? Okay, so I have some more questions, but I think we go through the review first and then we can add to that also. Okay, Sarah Linda, you wanna kind of take us through your um, report? Before, before we do that, could I just ask Tony to elaborate a little bit on what he's referring to as um, practices, drainage practices? I mean, it, it appears to be kind of a dry well set up, but, uh, you know, just explain a little bit better what those structures are. There, there's one to the west of the house, there's one halfway down the hill there that's in a kind of an oval arrangement, and then there are a couple that are down close to Westlake Road. Mm -hmm. So what are they? Hi, Sarah. Um, this is Tony again. So. Uh, like you said, uh, those infiltration practices are dry wells. We showed details for that on the following page. Uh, namely, it would have the crushed run stone underground and stormwater would be directed towards that region of the developed lot uh, before infiltrating into the ground. Um, given the steep slopes present on the site and uh, the limited use, uh, usability of area immediately in the vicinity of Westlake Road, we felt that this was the most suitable practice for the site as opposed to uh, creating some sort of pond that could receive the stormwater. Um, that being said, we've designed the central and redundant roadside dry wells in order to hold back the one year storm per the town of Canandaigua's stormwater design criteria and um, we permit the overflow of stormwater for worse storm events uh, further down the site into developed swales uh, where they would uh, still rely on those infiltration practices, but ultimately um, would overflow into the existing sweat, roadside swale uh, in the event that uh, they could not be contained in those practices. So, so that's anything other than a one year storm, um, uh, uh, the overflow mechanism would come into play. Is that what you're saying? Uh, yes, that's correct. Uh, the overflow mechanism would uh, come into effect for those events, but similarly throughout that storm event, um, 
infiltration would continue. Okay. And um, I can't quite visualize what's going on inside this oval, which is the central um, dry well structure. You mentioned there's also is a patio there. Does that mean this is kind of a grate with, with tables and chairs on top of it? Or, or what, what does it look like? So the dry wells surface treatment is just grass. It's just proposed to be grass. There's no coverage there. However, uh, the northern region, which is uh, the um, more, well, the lighter gray is that proposed patio region, uh, which would just sheet flow directly over uh, into the dry well. The central region is built up and the boulder lines throughout the site plans are representing retaining systems uh, that are proposed uh, based off of what regions of the site need to be built up or cut back. Um, what we're proposing to use is the Sierra escape retention system with a vegetated uh, wall face. And, and the patio area, is that paved? Yes, the patio area is paved and is considered in the impermeable uh, surface calcs, namely for lot coverage. So, so it's an impervious surface? I mean, is it, is it concrete? Um, it is uh, not explicitly called out in our site plan. Uh, it's just noted as patio area and is considered in the lot coverage calcs. Uh, as I said previously though, the drywall region would have uh, grass surface treatment. Okay, thank you. Have you considered rain gardens in that? Would that be appropriate in that area instead of just the sheeting into grass? So frankly, given the amount of runoff from the site and given how that portion of the site is frankly just steep coming towards Westlake Road, um, a rain garden really wouldn't provide sufficient capacity, we feel, uh, to hold back even the one year storm event. And hence why we have these uh, dry wells that are say five feet deep in the central region uh, as well as in the regions by Westlake Road. Uh, the only other area I would say that could handle some of the stormwater runoff from the site would be uh, further to the west between Onalinda Drive and the proposed home given how it is a flatter region. Uh, however, um, given how there is the off-site drainage area that drains directly towards our lot. Um, yeah, that's been a problem. Realis realistically, um, if we were to direct, say half of the house's runoff and the driveway's runoff towards a uh, pond of some kind in the western side of the site there, uh, its capacity would also uh, be dictated by the off-site drainage area that drains towards it as well. Um, I know that you are intending, or it, it appears that you're intending to clear cut practically the lot, except for very small um, areas to the north and south. Um, uh, that's a concern for many reasons, and uh, maybe we should get into the report. Um, uh, I, I'll just bring up the walkway um, that you intend. What kind of surface will that be? And I think that in your plan, you say it's only four feet wide, but um, just wondering how you would, would attempt to do that and saving trees at the same time, or would you just be clear cutting and then put that in? Because you're going to run into some problems with some ridgeline um, guidelines uh, with uh, buffering uh, the view from the lake. Uh, so you might want to start thinking about keeping some of those larger trees um, and how you can mitigate just clear cutting everything. Okay, Sarah Linda, go ahead. Okay, well, um... I apologize for this review being a little on the long side, but um, I'll just go through and read it. Uh, and, and Eric, could you put up a, um, an aerial view here so that we can take a look at this site in the context of the other ones, um, either, either the Google 
street or the Google satellite view or Encore would would do it. Sure. Okay, so yeah, pan, pan out so you can see four or five houses to the north and to the south. A little farther out. Yeah, okay, okay, that's good. Um, so that shows you most of Annalinda Drive. Um, uh, the total is about 14 houses. This one is in, about in the middle. Um, so the beginning of the report just summarizes the the variance requests, um, uh, request for approval of a single family home on a vacant parcel, of, um, por on the vacant portion of a two section parcel, there is an existing cottage on the lakefront portion of the lot. The variance is required for the front setback from Anna Linda. And if we go back to the aerial view, um, uh, this, as Tony mentioned, uh, this lot could be, uh, you could consider either Westlake Road or Annalinda to be the front, but in this case, we're considering Annalinda to be the front because that's where they're getting their vehicular access. So uh, while you might think of the other side as the front, um, in fact, Annalinda is the front and they're putting the house up near the top. So they need a variance um, because what ordinarily it would be a 60 foot front setback requirement. Um, in addition, there's a, re a variance required for lot coverage. The lot coverage is 29%. Um, ordinarily, the lot coverage requirement would be 25%. Uh, but in this case, the lot is steep enough that some provisions of the steep slopes law come into play. And the steep slopes law says that if you have a lot that has this much steep slope, the lot coverage requirement is reduced um, by by 10%. So the maximum lot coverage that applies to this particular site is uh, 22 and a half. But instead, they're going the other direction and actually asking for even higher lot coverage than would be allowed on a regular parcel, let alone a steep slope parcel. Um, so obviously, this that's one of the major issues here, they want to, yeah. you know, put a whole lot of impervious surface on a steep slope. And um, a part of the reason for this is because of the development on the lakeshore side of it. And in particular, if you go over there and look, and we'll see some pictures of it in a minute, but there's a fairly extensive uh, paved parking area on the lakefront side. Um, it's got concrete pavers in there and it allows for many cars uh, because this is a wide parcel. It's, I don't know what, uh, you know, 125 or more feet. Um, it's, it's wider than the, the average one along there. So anyway, that's one of the variances, the lot coverage one. And then there's, as uh, Eric mentioned, there's a variance required because there would be two single family homes on the same parcel. Um, so the, going back to the aerial view, um, the unusual thing about this lot is um, every, every other parcel within five or six to the north and south of it is, has already been developed. This is the only one that's um, uh, entirely wooded. And um, if we can look at the photographs, I'll sort of show you what that looks like. Um, I mean, first of all, you can see here, this is, this is a wider than usual parcel. Um, and the, it's not mature woods, it's woods that's probably just been unmowed for something like, you know, 25, 30, 35 years. So there's some fairly tall trees, but nothing uh, with a, a, a big diameter. Um, uh, but it is a substantial kind of, um, you know, chunk of woods there in what's otherwise a fairly dense part of Westlake Road. So th this is looking down from Annalinda Drive from the south. The next photograph, you can go down. Next one is looking uh, back towards the south and up from Annalinda Drive. And then um, go down to the other side, looking up from Westlake Road. Uh, this is what it's like. So the other houses along West Westlake Road and along Annalinda um, are sited closer to Westlake Road. And they tend to be oriented east-west rather than north-south, but they're not all that consistent. There, there isn't a consistent setback from 
from Westlake Road. There's a little bit of everything in through there. If you look at the next photograph, that shows this um, concrete paved parking area that I mentioned along the lakefront portion of it. And the and then keep going. Um, you th this is the small. Um, it, it, technically, it's a house. Um, I guess they think of it as a boathouse there. Um, um, it's, it's about a, a, a little under 700 square foot building. So it's a cottage really. Um, and then there's, there are a couple of other structures there. If you keep going, there's a, a roof boathouse and then there's this shed building which has probably got recreation equipment in it. Um, and the bank from, from their parking area up on Westlake Road down to lake level is quite a drop. It, uh, and the access down there is some very nice um, masonry steps and kind of boulders along the side. Um, and there are some mature trees in the bank and there's a lot of shrubs. It, it's very nicely landscaped down there. Uh, so this is, this is looking straight back towards the, um, towards the parcel from the lakefront portion of the lot. And then, is this the last photo? Yeah, I think there is. But then there's one more photo. Just the other one that you wanted. Yeah, the one I sent you just recently. Um, um, I took this because one of the, their proposal doesn't have much of any change at all to the portion of the site on the lake side. But there are two things they're proposing, taking down two trees. And they're the biggest <laughs> trees on that parcel. One of them is this large tree that's on the right-hand side in the photograph. That's a red oak. And the other one is the second largest tree, which is a black walnut, and that's over kind of in the corresponding portion, um, uh, right, right behind where that telephone pole is. So those two trees are coming down. Um, there are still some other trees within that bank, as you can see, there are some kind of medium sized uh, flowering trees in there, but the two biggest trees are coming down. There isn't any um, explanation of why that's happening, but I think it's a just since the ECB is concerned with trees generally um, and concerned with the, the loss of the wooded area upland, I, I think it's also worth you know, thinking about, do we really have to lose those two very impressive trees on the lakefront side of the site? So um, back to the report. Uh, the proposal is to fully clear the entire upland portion of the site, except for a couple of narrow strips of vegetative buffer um, near the north and south edge. And that's not necessarily keeping the existing trees, but it could be just planting some new hedgerows or something along those lines. It's, it's not specified in a landscape plan to how they're going to do that, that vegetative buffer, but it's not a continuous one. Um, and then significant regrading is proposed to create the more gently sloped walking path um, yeah. to the east from the new house. And the variance application describes the need for that as a, um, uh, because the, the, of the desire for older members of the family to have easy access from the, from the new house up at the top of the hill down to the lake level um, property. And I'm, I'm kind of guessing that part of what they have in mind here is to create a path which is easy, which, which could be used with a golf cart. Um, but they don't want to have to go all the way around on Linda Drive and back up Westlake Road in order to get from the house down, the upper house down to the lower house. So this is the um, solution that they've come up with, this sort of extended path. Uh, my concern about it is just that it requires an enormous amount of regrading of the site in order to achieve this um, uh, gently enough sloped path that you could do this with a, with a golf cart or you could do it without steps. Um, and uh, then the last comment is this lot is the last undeveloped parcel along among the 14 between Onalinda Drive and Westlake Road, the only one with extensive woods and is about double the width of many of the neighbors. The proposed house is oriented north south across the full width of the site leaving minimal side yards. And that's, that was one of the things that struck me about the site plan was this new house is, is very long and thin and it leaves almost no space beyond the required side setback on the two sides. 
And this is an area where there, as you know, there are drainage problems all yeah. down on Alinda Drive. So this means if there's a drainage problem back here, there isn't anywhere for this uh, water to go except down these very narrow channels on either side of the site or spilling onto the neighbor's property, which is, of course, the problem that's happened up and down other parts of Onalinda Drive. So I think that's a potential concern. And they obviously have put a lot of, of time and effort into, into attempting to um, uh, create a drainage system that addresses that. Um, and I, I think it does address that at least up to a one year storm. But as you know, one year storms <laughs> be happening a lot more frequently than one year storms and so do 25 year storms. So if this is gonna overflow with a one year storm, yeah. just imagine right. what might happen with a, you know, a, a serious uh, rain event. Um, so the environmental concerns on this um, Joyce has already mentioned some of these. The near wholesale clearance of trees is unfortunate given the many environmental benefits of trees as outlined in the town's open space plan and the activities of the tree committee. Likewise, for the removal of the two largest trees from the lakefront portion of the lot. Um, the extended north-south orientation of the house with minimal side setbacks poses potential drainage problems for adjacent properties in the event the uphill dry well is overwhelmed in an extreme rainfall event. The steep slopes on the site have triggered a reduction in lot area, which would suggest a rigorous enforcement of the lot coverage standards. Yet, the applicant requests a variance to allow even greater lot, lot coverage than would be permitted on a site without steep slopes. This appears to be a flagrant disregard for the town's policy for protecting lake water quality by limiting development on steep slope areas. That's probably the main concern. Yes. Um, on the matter of the two houses on a single parcel, uh, the ECB notes that several other parcels in the Onalinda Drive neighborhood also have two, two homes, effectively, uh, both an upland home and a smaller building down on the lake. Um, there are also some cases where, these, where the two portions of the lot have been separated and the lakefront lot has become a standalone parcel with a year-round home on it, or even a seasonal home. The owner has stated that his intent is to continue only seasonal use of the lakefront buildings and not maintain two year-round single-family homes on the parcel. However, that may be his intent, but that does not bind future owners. And the eventual conversion of the lakefront cottage to a year-round home seems almost inevitable. It could be a separate lot, it could be a rental, it could be family use, but the way things are going on the lake, if there's a... Yeah almost 700 square foot building on the lake, sooner or later, somebody's gonna to wanna to move into it. And I would suspect it's gonna be sooner rather than later. Um, so if that were to happen, this would amount to an undesirable increase in the residential density of the lakefront, which is exactly what the zoning board or ordinances are trying to discourage. Um, so the ECB recommends denial of the lot coverage variance and strict adherence to the provisions of the steep slopes law. Um, ECB encourages the applicant to reconsider the wholesale clearance of the trees and the regrading of the lot, including the regrading required for the pedestrian walk. Since access to the lakefront portion of the walk requires stairs anyway, the use of stairs in the steeper sections of the connecting walkway would be consistent and would allow for a reduced regrading and a shorter path and lower lot coverage. So, I mean, I'm sympathetic with the idea that these people want to take a golf cart from the house down to Westlake Road. But when you get down there, there's no way to take the golf cart down to the lake anyway. You're just on that concrete parking area. And then you've got to be able to walk down with a with, down the steps with a walker or something like that. So it seems to me the same, you know, reasoning could be used for the portion of the, for the walkway that goes from the main house down to the road. It, they can make that make it down the steps down to the lake they can make it down the steps to um uh from, from the main house to west lake road and if they can't make it down steps then they gotta drive or they've got to take their golf cart or, or around the around down to the end of Anna Linda drive um so that's my take on it anyway um ecb recommends reconsideration of the tree removals in the lakefront area or replacement with new native trees that will play a similar role in meeting the goals of the town's shoreline guidelines. That is, other trees that will achieve that same stature uh, uh, over time. Over and time is the problem, of course. 
I'm sorry, said it. I said over the the whole problem is that it will take a long time for yeah. those trees. Those trees are probably what's holding that that slope in place. Yeah. Tree roots that yeah. size are are keeping that bank up above that that secondary house. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I think those I think those trees are a great thing. Um, they need to plant a few more before these get too old and die is what they need to do and leave these in place. You've got about 10 years on tree roots until they rot and then things start to fall apart. And in 10 years, a, a new sapling is not going to hold what this one is. I think we should add that to the recommendations regarding this, um, a little bit of information here regarding exactly why we think that those trees should remain. It's because of the soil erosion at, uh, aspect here and the impact that, the safety impact that it's gonna have on that 700 square foot uh, building at the, at the bottom of that slope. Um, the other, one other thing I would, uh, recommend uh, that we add to this would be when we're talking about the walkway is that the applicant um, examine and review uh, how a tram could benefit the elderly um, people in the family because trams are very less intense um, to into an into a steep slope there's there's no grading it's just you know, it's very, very in a non-invasive kind of, of development. And it could easily be accounted for, it could easily be run down the one side and then, you know, come down to the, wherever you would want, you know, down to the bottom to um, County Road 16, and then a little walkway to match up to the, you know, across the walkway there. So there are options, I think that maybe, um, the owner needs uh, to look at as far and keep in mind that we're talking about environmental protection here of water quality, stormwater management, and soil erosion, all those different things. Not only mm -hmm. you're talking about scenic views from the lake, and this is why I bring up the ridgeline guidelines, because there are um, buffering aspects of that law which could impact this application. Is the slope on this parcel significantly steeper than the, the adjacent properties or is it the same? There, according to our summer report, um, there are 53% of the lot is 60 to 30% slope. 14% of the lot is 31 to 60% steep slope. And then there are some other smaller percentages with a, a different, uh, the, you know, these um, level part there to the west where they intend to build a house. As far as that um, dry well in the middle of the property with the steps leading down to it and the patio there, there is a lot of patio space on the deck that the applicant is, um, you know, proposing. Um, I'm, really, do we need to have that interference in that particular area? Is it absolutely necessary? It doesn't appear that, that that it appears that there could be some mitigation in that way, and I think it would be appropriate. It's about disturbing the steep slopes, and that's one of the concerns that the ECB has for this project. So that's what I'm looking at here. Um, anything else? Uh, the other thing could be as far as the Peruvia surface, that you've got an asphalt driveway coming off of Onalinda Drive to the garage. The owner could consider, the applicant could consider doing something with a permeable mm -hmm. surface instead of an impervious surface. Okay. Um, there, there was one other thing I, I didn't get to in the recommendation. Uh, ECB recommends the planning board consider measures to limit the future use of the lakefront cottage to lake recreation related support use 
as described by the applicant. So uh, I, I don't know exactly what form that would take, but you know, conceivably there could be a deed restriction or something like that that would prevent the lakefront portion of the lot from residential use um, or anything other than incidental res residential use. Uh, I mean, I, I don't see anything wrong with it continuing to be a guest house or something like that. Just shouldn't be, there, there should be some way of, of, of preventing it from turning into a, a year round home. Okay. Can we Any add the zoning board to that one too? If they're the one be reviewing a use variance? Oh, oh, I should say planning and- They can condition it as well if they're- Should it be planning and zoning or just zoning? It might as well do planning and zoning. The planning, yeah. the planning board can put a condition on it too, certainly. Yeah, okay. Good, good thought. Okay, Sarah Linda, do you have the other um, uh, recommendations that we kind of talked about here regarding the trees and then regarding the tram? Um, well, I can do that or maybe John can add some notes. I'll, 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 I'll make some revisions and send it, including those things. Okay. Is there any other thing, uh, Pat, Edith, do you have anything else? Gary, any, any other questions for Tony? Are there any other aspects of this uh, site plan that you would like to review in more detail. Um, I just wanted to say I like the uh, I like Joyce your suggestion of the tram because I was about to say that and then you brought it up and <laughs> so I think that's a great idea and and I'm thinking perhaps the large trees at the lake. Um, the only reason I could think of that they would want to be removing them might be a view related issue possibly but i don't know do they infringe upon a view not at that i not wouldn't think it at that height i i wouldn't not think so winter. at that height but yeah you know you got to get on the lot and see right. sometimes right. now there's other ways if the trees at the bottom somehow are infringing upon a view the recommendation is to prune the trees instead of cutting them down yeah and if you need to have that view, that scenic view to the lake, that would be the appropriate way to do it, not to cut down the trees for a view. Yeah. The thing is, there's so much height difference here. If you're talking about the view from the house up on top of the hill, that house is up at crown level, if not yeah. higher. Yeah. I mean, exactly. it's way up there. So yeah. the crown of the tree is going to be probably below eye level from the deck of the main house. I would think so too. So I, I don't know if that would, but who knows? That's, that's the owner. Not unless you know, Tony, what the owner had in mind. I don't know. Okay. Is that it then? Okay. Then Sarah Linda will forward the, um, the uh, edits to John and the planning board will receive a copy. And I'm sure Tony, you can receive a copy too at that time. Great, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, we'll continue on with the, where we left off on our agenda, just so, I don't know, what do you wanna do? Do you wanna finish these uh, PRC referrals or do you wanna go back to our original and then come back? because we do have some things to talk about as far as the referrals from the town board. Um, any preferences from anybody? Yeah, um, it's up to you. Okay. Um, why don't we just finish up then the PRC referrals because the other two are kind of, they're, they're uh, much smaller in scope. And then we can go back. All right, this is for CPN 20073 Batiste at, at Sandy Beach Drive. Want to give us a rundown, Eric? Sure, sure. Um, it's in addition to an existing dwelling, um, it's kind of an older cottage on Sandy Beach. Uh, the addition is not on the lakeside, it's in between. Uh, Sandy Beach and Canada Lake, but the addition is more towards the Sandy Beach side. Uh, they actually, I think, got a variance a couple years 
back at this point for an, a smaller edition. Um, I'm not sure at that time I forgot that this front setback variance, but they'll need a front setback variance for the setback from uh, Sandy Beach and what was it, a uh, lot coverage variance as well. Yeah, a lot coverage variance for the impervious surface. They don't appear to be proposing any infrastructure. Looks like they're taking down one tree there on the, well, it's not quite south, sort of in the center, but not, again, not on the lakeside. They have no trees on the lakeside, it looks like. Okay. Um, Sarah Linda, want to take us through the report? Any questions for Eric, anybody, before we move on? Okay. Uh, yeah, I have one, but I'll, I'll start off. Um, the, so the request is for a proposed home addition of 658 square feet. And uh, if you look at the site plan, that's roughly doubling the size of the house. Um, the set, required setback from Sandy Beach Drive would be 55 feet. Um, they're looking for 36 feet instead. And the lot coverage it, right now is 34%. 30% uh, is, the, is the maximum according to the zoning ordinance. So they're already over by 4% and they're looking to go over by another 4%. Um, this site has property on both sides of Sandy Beach as many of them do, um, the, the lakefront lot and then there's a lot um, to the east of Sandy Beach Drive, which has got a garage on it because it's 970 square feet. So the garage was half again as big as the house. Um, and it looks like a relatively new garage because when I looked at the, um, I, I mean, I, we probably looked at a site plan for the yeah. creation of this garage sometime within the last few years. Because when yeah, I looked on the Google Maps, there was no garage. So that must be, you know, like two or three years old. Yeah. I don't remember this, but um, I do. If they, so we granted, or the, the town granted them a variance to exceed the lot. Um, uh, coverage by 4% in order to build this great big garage. Um, it seems as if they must have known <laughs> that they also wanted to expand the house. <laughs> and um, they kind of, this seems a little bit backwards, doing but, the garage first and then coming back and asking for an even bigger variance to expand the house. Um, so I'm a little skeptical as a result of that. Chair Linda, to that point, to that point, Sarah Linda, this is actually a new owner of the property. It's not the same owner from before. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense then. Thank yeah. you for, for pointing that out. Okay. But the fact remains, it, it, it's only gone into a non-conforming uh, situation just within the last few years. Now they're asking for an, an even greater non-conformity. Um, so the um, other thing that affects the amount of, of permeable surface is there's a certain amount of patio space on the lake side of the lot. And if you go back to the Encore site or the site plan, um, we'll, we'll show it. There's a um, paved deck and then there's a sidewalk and then there's an even bigger paved area which is right at the top of the retaining wall um, at their lakefront. So that all adds up to yeah. um, 818 feet of patio space, that there's more paved patio space, and this is not even counting the driveway, but there's a lot of patio space. Um, so, all right, th so that's the summary of the points. Environmental concerns, Sandy Bottom Drive and Fallbrook Park have the town's most dense lakefront development with small lots originally created for small seasonal cottages. Over the years, most of the cottages have been winterized and enlarged or replaced with larger year-round homes. This site is one of the few remaining structures retaining the size, massing, and visual character of the original cottages of the 1920s and 30s. However, the proposed addition is reasonably compatible with the character of the existing home, and at least they're not tearing it down. Um, the town's zoning law does not reflect the small lot sizes of Fallbrook Park, Sandy Bottom neighborhood. Um, so variances are required anytime the owners want to follow the ongoing trends towards ever higher lot coverage. 
Uh, many variances have been granted over the years, suggesting that the town is not serious about maintaining its site development standards for this neighborhood. Um, and that you can see from the way, you know, the way they describe right. their uh, rationale for the variances. Well, everybody else has gotten variances. All my neighbors have at least this much lot coverage. So why can't I? Um, so I've, my um, uh, feeling about this Sandy Bottom and Fallbrook Park is that uh, the ordinance committee ought to, you know, look at this and not treat these this neighborhood the same way they treat other neighborhoods which have larger lot sizes and which therefore um, uh, have a different character. Many, but though anyway, here's the draft recommendation. ECB does not support further expansion of the lot coverage for this site, particularly because one lot coverage variances, variance has already been granted in the recent past and increases in impurious surface near the lake add to the long-term degradation of lake water quality. We suggest that the applicant modify the proposal to maintain or lower the lot coverage by removal of a portion of the impermeable patio area. So, you know, they could, they could eliminate the patios and they wouldn't have to have this variance. Um, not all the patios, but the portion of it. ECB also suggests the ordinance committee consider changes to the zoning and or site development standards to better address the site planning issues related to the Fallbrook Park Sandy Bottom Drive neighborhood especially front yard setback and lot coverage with the intent of creating reasonable standards that the ZBA is willing and able to consistently uphold. Yeah, that's a very good point. I think we've been talking about that for, for a while. Can, can I ask that um, that recommendation be, you know, you can include it in here, that's fine, but also in like the other board business section to kind of put it within the minutes there and then I'll, I'll give it to the ordinance committee or whatever as like a more formal request anyways to look at it. Hey, John, could you do that for us, please? Yep, we'll do. Okay. Can Thank I make you, a Eric. quick comment? Sure. I actually have something to say this time. Um, Eric, I was wondering if, if they showed any kind of grading around the new addition or if they mentioned how they're gonna handle like water runoff, like how they're going to channel um, the stormwater into the lake. They they don't seem to they mention. Don't show. Do they have that anywhere? Because usually you see grading. They don't show you know? grading. Uh, I know it's kind of flat there though. Yeah. Yeah, it is. But do they make mention of like the stormwater runoff from the new addition? Like into gutters or under underground or anything like that. That's probably a, a very uh, pertinent no concern, and maybe we should add that that there is no way that uh, that it appears maybe. that they have understood what the runoff from the rain gutters will do. Yeah, because oftentimes we you know we see some kind of underground systems. Maybe there's a note True. in there I missed though. Let's see. Storm sewer shell no. be modified for a new footprint driveway. Okay. I don't know if that really answers the question, but maybe it does. I don't know. But it's something for the planning board to take a look at because we don't see it on the site plan. Yeah. So that that's a good concern. I mean, that's appropriate concern. I'm wondering, since this is in the floodplain, if our floodplain manager, I didn't see any um, kind of uh, comments from him. Um, Eric, did, did our CEO give us anything regarding anything about the drainage and no, whatever? He, Sometimes he chimes in. He provided comments about the flood. Uh, let me pull them up here real quick. Um, okay. So what he said, well, one, we need the Venezia survey. Um, existing dwelling has a crawl space located at flood elevation. Since there's substantial improvements, detail how you're going to meet the code elevation, you know, two feet above the flood elevation with both the addition and the existing dwelling. Hmm. Okay, so we need to be concerned about 
drainage here, I think. And I'm sure that um, Chris will take a look at that. But if we could just put it in our remarks, that would be great. The other thing that um, you kind of headed up was their response to the shoreline guidelines. That response is really not adequate um, and doesn't really help with anything here. They do come under the shoreline guidelines uh, with this project. And I think what, you know, we would want the planning board to make sure that a statement, a guideline statement with some information in it, how they're going to attend to that is appropriate. And then we'll like that to the recommendation section. Yes, add, adding that to the recommendation section. A plus a landscape plan, please. Um, this is what we do. There's a, they're going to take down a tree. How are they going to manage that? How, what else are they going to put plant there instead of that tree? If they're going to take it down, we need to see some trees on the property. And that's another issue for the ordinance committee, I'm thinking. Hmm. That you take down trees, on, especially on lakeshore properties, you need to put those trees back. And this is all about, you know, water quality issues. It's about drainage issues and it's about soil erosion issues, whether it's a flat plain or whether it's a steep slope. I think that we need to be talking about that. Um, just, uh, Eric, from the from the aspect of the climate warming that we have been talking about today, that you and I have been talking about in the comprehensive plan. Um, we need to get serious about climate warming strategies, and those strategies are all natural resource protection management strategies. And so when we can have some uh, leverage, if you will, uh, for planting more trees, then we need to do that because tree canopies are going to be a very, very important aspect of this of our global warming, you know, if, as we move forward. Okay, so we've got our report. I don't know who is who is going to um, do the edits for the recommendations for this project. Was that you again, Sarah Linda or Eric? Were you taking notes on this too? I, I took some notes. I'll I'll try to do that. Uh, no, I haven't. Okay, all right. I I thought from what you said that you uh, sounded like you might be. Okay, that'll be great. Uh, and then we'll get those to the planning board and the zoning board. Okay, any more questions? All right, going on to CPN 2076, Krebs at Sandy Beach Drive once again. Give me one second while I pull it up. Sure. Um, so, again, Sandy Beach Drive, just up the street, we have the existing house here. Um, essentially, they're adding a relatively small addition on uh, this side, on the lakeside, rather. A couple plantings, landscapes, but a deck on the house facing the lake. Um, from this... So they have the requirement to have a 30 foot setback. So they are meeting that setback requirement, but they do need a, I recall, lot coverage, lot coverage variance approval. 62% and 40 is required maximum. Um, they are pretty scant on landscaping. Go ahead. Eric, I was just curious, why is the lot coverage? I'm sorry, Eric, um, can you explain why the lot coverage requirement is 40% on this lot, whereas it's 30% on the one that's just down the street? The catch. Well, maybe the Wait, the one down the street was. The one we just talked about. Yeah, it might have to do a lot. 
think the other one was like 12,000 square feet. Oh, okay. So it's a difference in lot size. Yeah, that one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. Um, no shore, no shoreline guidelines that I found in the file, and we need a landscaping plan. Here we go again with the shoreline guidelines. There's no trees on this property um, from this. Anyway, I don't know, did I, if we need to see if there are or not, I don't know if they actually indicated trees on the site plan. Doesn't look like, I don't know if those are trees next to the south of the lot line there. Or, no, that's, that's the other one. Oh. We're looking for 352A. Okay, so there's trees. Yeah, there's trees. Okay, but like, can, can you get it like an oblique? Is that possible? Yeah, what? An oblique shot. Is there like a better angle of the property? Just to see the trees. Is that it right right in front of us or that doesn't look like it because that um, doesn't look like there's two trees on either side of the house. That was, close. That was, three, five, that was three five one six. Yeah, that's that's what I was Well, what we're concerned about is the trees. It appears that from this view anyway, that there are trees there, quite a mature tree, actually. And, um, but shoreline guidelines still prevail here. There you go. That's a good shot. I think that tree might actually be on a neighbor's property. Oh. Oh. I there mean, you, you know, you're looking at some fairly long shadows in these pictures. Yeah. Oh, is it? The one that's in the middle here, is that the lot we're looking at? Did, or, Where the hand is? Right there. This one right there. Tight in there, aren't they? Oh, there. Oh, oh, there. Oh, yeah, that tree does look like it might be on the other property. Yeah. Okay, well, so we're looking for trees. We're looking for a landscaping plan. We're looking for shoreline guidelines. Okay, any other questions for Eric before we go into our draft advisory report? Okay, Sarah Linda. Okay, the key points, the request is for construction of a tw 25 by 12 foot deck on the lake side of the existing home. Existing lot coverage is 59% and proposed lot coverage is 62%. Maximum required is 40%. No change is proposed to the building coverage at 25%, which is already above the 25%. So I guess a deck does not count as building coverage, only mm -hmm. lot coverage. Uh, perennial beds are proposed next to the new deck and the deck material is not specified. I'm, Eric, do you know what they have in mind? Is it a pervious or an impervious deck? I don't, also I, I, I might didn't... need to revise that determination. Uh, I, I didn't. Um, that Chris prepared uh, coverage variance. Okay, well let's let's find that out. Anyways, but I, I don't know what their material is. I mean, I looked through the drawing and I didn't see I didn't see any reference to what it was going to be made of, and I don't know to well that that could have that could affect the um, lot coverage calculations yeah. if it's yeah. obvious material. Um, exactly. Okay, so environmental concerns. While the applicant states that the surrounding properties have similar rates of lot coverage, this is not supported by direct evidence and it appears unlikely for, from an aerial view. Um, 
Others appear to exceed the town standards, but are typically larger lots with more lawn area. So if you just look at that Encore map again, or the Google map, it looks like this is one that's really, I mean, they're all pushing the envelope on lot coverage, but this one is probably already more than um, just about anybody yeah. else. The house is particularly large. Yeah. And, yeah, and the lot is, and, and the rear portion of it is not as big How as some of them I brought are. home um, some steaks and potato for dinner. Really? Can I come for dinner? What do you do now? <laughs> okay. I have to talk to you. Okay. Um, the recommendation then? Um, Okay, so environmental concerns. Uh, oh, and the other environmental concern is increase of impervious surface at near the lake add to um, adds to the long term degradation of lake water quality. The recommendation ECB recommends approval of this deck only if the plan is modified to show a corresponding reduction in other impervious surfaces, such as the large existing patio adjacent to the lake retaining wall or the asphalt drives at the rear of the property permeable pavers in these areas would allow the proposed deck project to proceed without further compromise to runoff and water quality. So get rid of some patio if you want a deck. That's the- Right. The, the, the other only addition to the recommendations would be to have the shoreline guidelines and a landscape plan, including trees, if we can get away with that. Okay. okay. Any more uh, response, comments? How, how often does precedent factor into issuing variances? If you're, you know, your neighbors have been given variances on something, are you likely going to be granted a variance? It seems to be we encountered this uh, a lot. Yeah. Um, the, the zoning board is always very hesitant to create precedent you know once you do that you kind of get in the gray area of where you're kind of writing code which is not the zoning board's duty that's the town boards um, and so they look at variances granted as more informative and maybe informative of the character of a particular neighborhood uh, but they review every application on its own merits or they certainly try to anyways they look at them individually so it sounds like some areas need to be tweaked, as, as Sarah Linda pointed out, in this particular neighborhood. It's been this way for a very long time, Gary. <laughs> We've seen a lot of applications, I'll tell you. Something would, I think it would, that area would benefit from a little more introspection there. You know, the reason that they say, uh, they hope that the zoning board or rather that the zoning code brings lots more into conformance over a long enough timeline. But with the variances granted, especially in this area and Fallbrook and Poplar Beach, it's really not what's happening out there. It's more likely, like you guys said, that a zoning code change should be should be allowed. Okay, I guess we're done with our referrals from the PRC. Let's go back now to our um, th the third page of our agenda and talk about the, uh, let's see, where do we leave off? Yeah, comprehensive plan update. You wanna give us a little update, Eric? And then there's some other issues here sure, I'd like sure. to um, have comment on. So we have a, a working draft, I think, uh, which is exciting. And, it is. Um, the project, the project team and the CIC are kind of working to finalize a well, finalize a working draft uh, enough so that feel confident presenting it to the public and uh, getting comments from the public. This is, would be before it goes to the town board for their own public hearing. Um, it is available on the board page. It should be something that you guys uh, maybe have scrolled past, but it's up on the top there. Um, please take a look at it. Give me comments. Um, I know Sarah, Linda, and Joyce, you guys have both provided me comments, and I've uh, tried to work them into a revised draft. 
I do have a, a revised draft that I'm trying to get up online right now. It's just a bit large. Um, mm. So I think it, it looks good. Generally, the, um, the comments have been supportive with some changes here and there. Uh, Joyce, like we talked about, adding a, um, a section about climate change. I did include um, a part there in the existing conditions, and then we can be more specific about the action steps to take with regard to that in the action steps portion. Um, but yeah, I think I think it looks good, and of course we'll appreciate your guys' comments on it to make it even better. And thanks again, Eric, for all your work. That's a big project, and you've done a great job. We appreciate it. All right, any any more of the comprehensive plan for Eric? Eric, what, what's your timeline for um, creating the draft that goes to the town board and the public? Do you have a, do you have a target date? Um, yeah, well, the target date yeah. has shifted over the <laughs> course of the year, obviously. Um, but I was hoping to have a draft for the town board by the end of the year. I think it's probably more likely that we'll hold what would be the first public hearing, you know, this would be kind of CIC's project team public hearing early next year. Um, and then, you know, the town board after whatever revisions would get it from there. So uh, January, maybe. So, so if, uh, I, I was hoping I could get the history team to um, uh, deal with that this morning, only most of them hadn't looked at it yet. So we're going to talk about it in December. I just want to make make sure that if I give you some revisions um, for the for the historic preservation portion in December, that that will make it into the next draft. Or is that too yeah, late? I would hope so. No, that's. I mean, we'll we'll still be getting comments from the public and whatnot at that point, so there shouldn't be any issue there. Sarah so, Linda, are you looking at the uh, vision and goals? There is a, a historic and cultural uh, goals section in the back. Yeah, uh, that's, what I, that's, that's what I want to get them to provide some. Um, yes, yeah, uh, some feedback. That would be great. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Eric, could you please uh, give us just a little bit of update um, regarding from the Ordinance Committee regarding uh, the wetlands uh, review and uh, presentation that you had from Colin Deal? What was the what was the main um, thing there? Grab and, my notes here. Okay, um, basically, Colin Deal um, had come to the NRI team um, as we were working with the NRI update, and um, he gave us a little presentation on uh, some of the things that uh, could be going on with water quality issues. And then um, there was, uh, then after that, subsequently after that, um, there was, the FDA then redid some of their um, regulations regarding wetlands. Uh -huh. And so Colin called and uh, wondered if we would be interested in having some kind of presentation. Eric said, yes, the ordinance committee would love to hear what he had to say. And so Colin Deal did go to the Ordinance Committee and um, presented, I I have a, a um, it is a uh, code from another town regarding their wetland, new wetlands code. Um, we don't know what kinds of protections we're going to be having with our wetlands and now that the federal um, regula regulations have changed. So this is about um, protecting that resource. Yeah, so um, Colin met with us and you know, obviously gave us a little background on him and his specialty. Uh, I, generally what the regulations would do are um, re require a local buffer from wetlands um, New York State DEC requires a buffer from their wetlands. Uh, I don't believe that the Army Corps does. Um, and in the event that we have local wet wetlands that are not regulated wetlands, 
the local wetland ordinance would bring them under local purview. Um, it so, seems like a relatively simple proposal from a regulatory standpoint. Um, the big the big hurdle and uh, something that the ordinance committee kind of keyed in on and what what we need to look into is the cost of doing that um, GIS work to get an idea of where those local wetlands are. You know, right now we have, you know, the DC wetlands mapped in GIS, uh, and then you have the National Wetland Inventory, which really is not for that purpose. It was done for uh, wildlife back in 72 or something like that. So in order to use this ordinance, what would be a local wetland ordinance, most effectively we need some mapping of what our local wetlands are. Um, so the ordinance committee and the couple town board members there were curious, not necessarily concerned, but curious of what the costs were. And then, of course, you have to, or we would probably look into grants to see uh, what might be available. Um, there's a question about how extensive or how what the extent of local wetlands might be. Um, you know, what's the cost benefit of doing this type of thing? If there aren't any local wetlands, then, you know, having an ordinance for that reason wouldn't make sense. There probably are. I'm sure that there are. But, you know, measuring out cost benefit to that effect. Um, somebody was wondering whether the local regulations have held up in court. Um, I wouldn't be, it wouldn't surprise me if they, if they had. I don't see why they wouldn't. Um, there was another question of uh, making sure real estate transactions. Are, this is, you know, um, kind of an interesting question, but you know, to make sure that people who purchase property and you know want to develop on it aren't blindsided by our local wetland ordinance. Um, you know, as a potential lawsuit, I suppose. Uh, for potential takings, but you know, if we have a, a local regulation, I don't see why it would be similar to um, other ones. Anyways, I don't think yeah. that the ordinance committee was opposed. To it really, I think that they were generally in support of it. Just the big thing is the the mapping and cost of that. Yeah, that will be that will be an issue. Um, it's possible that this kind of uh, charting that. Uh, the NRI, um, we'll be talking about that in a minute regarding um, the implementation of the priorities um, as mentioned in the NRI. Um, uh, mentioned some of those technical kinds of updates and this we could include the wetlands in, in that if we, if we chose to. I know that with our implementation table that we'll be going through, there is that um, recommendation about wetlands. We might be able to I don't know, finesse it in there when it comes to grant writing and things like that to have give it a little bit more, um, you know, weight. Okay. Any questions regarding wetlands and where we're going with that? Joyce, uh, this is John. Colin Deal, who is he with? What organization? Uh, uh, he has his own uh, cup. Don't you have the, the, all that, Colin Deal? Deal, what is, what is it called? Um, I I can send it out. It's called it's called Deal Lux. Yeah, Deal Lux. I knew there was some I'll little. Pull it up right now. Okay. Hey, thanks. Okay. Referrals from the town board. Public hearing on the tax code amendment regulation of off street parking. Um, does anybody have any questions for uh, Eric regarding that tax code? We got the public hearing is going to be in November the 16th and the town board is looking for us to have an, our comments to them before that time. Ha, I'm just assuming that you've all read the off street parking and do you have any comments or anything that you would like to um, say about that? It's generally the same as what you all have seen before. 
Yeah, we did see that before, and we probably didn't have very many comments. I only have two comments for this one. And one is, is the landscaping um, requirements included in this code? I didn't see them. I didn't know if la the landscaping was in a different it's code entirely. Um, where is that? It's, it's actually included in the landscaping section of code. OK. That was that was my no, question. There was no changes. Okay, and the other one was um, just to kind of an aside, and and is was the thirteen hundred and sixty two feet of an off parking area for a use a pub a, a use building, and I'm thinking of Cheshire, and the um, Cheshire Meeting Hall, and. Um, wondering about parking in that area and then as i read further into the code i could see that there would there's going to be and they speak actually about cheshire and parking i think that's going to be an interesting scenario when the meeting hall um does eventually reach its you know complete uh renovation and when when everybody starts using it and how parking in cheshire is going to be impacted by this and what in the world we're going to do with it so that was the only uh oh that I that I saw there. Hopefully we'll invest in sidewalks and crosswalks. <laughs> that would be great. And so then we won't have any problems whatsoever. Okay. Okay, so uh I guess then the uh comments from uh, to back to the town where would be no comment unless we have that comment. Any for anybody. All right. Going on to the public hearing for the draft natural resource inventory. We've only looked at that about, you know, how many times already. Um, is there anything that anybody wants to make a comment now regarding back to the town board? I think we've had our comments and we did send them previously. John, I don't know if we have a copy of that or whatever, but I don't think there's probably any changes to that. Okay, I'll check. Okay, and then public hearing on uh, regulation of short-term rental units. Eric, you want to give us a little bit of background in that? I don't think we've seen that one before. Am I right or wrong? I think this is the first time. Uh, I believe you're right. Okay, so there might be some um, questions here for us. Yeah, so what's being proposed here um, is a result of a couple instances in the town of generally people overloading septic systems um, or doing some something that creates a nuisance um, and then and this is kind of the important part not being able to reach them you know if we want to send a violation notice get in contact with them time to correct whatever uh, violation there may be uh, sometimes there are LLCs and you know, they're just generally difficult to get a hold of. The, the intent here is to register short-term rentals. Um, that's basically it. Um, there's not anything more in this code as far as, you know, looking at your floor plan. Um, it, it's essentially just name and contact information uh, if you're going to operate a short-term rental. It seemed pretty straightforward anyway. Uh, does anybody have any comments or questions they want to ask Eric regarding this? Okay, John, I guess we'll have uh, back to the town board, no comments. Okay. All right. And moving forward past our referrals to from the prc we're going to go to old business now and that's on page four if anybody's got their agenda moving right along here to the ec page for the town newsletters um to let you know that we did have a a very um comprehensive uh article uh, maybe you've already read it gary produced that for us on the wild turkey i learned things i never knew about the wild turkey before so it was great to have that and thank you very much gary um for just participating and putting yourself out there and doing something i don't know if you've ever written a wild turkey uh, well, article first, before first but, but i know you're good in research that i know for sure <laughs> so thank you very much for that 
Um, in December, Edith has agreed to write the article. As a matter of fact, she already wrote the article, and uh, I'll be sending that off as soon as uh, in the appropriate time for the next publication. And that's uh, tracking your wildlife neighbors, and that's about the tracking little footprints in the in the snow kind of thing. And it's a very lively um, article, also. So, getting that moving forward with that, just we'll just move ahead here right now into the town hall display case thing. Um, yes, I should have that uh, probably finished by Tuesday next week. Wow, really? I'll have it done. Yeah, um, so that it'll be ready to install whenever you would like to do. I've okay. been, uh, it again is, you know, reading the snow. <laughs> yeah. And uh, should we wait so, for snow? <laughs> oh, I am not in a hurry for snow. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had a little taste the other day. We had a little taste. Yes, yeah. I know. I, Okay, so is anybody, um, usually, well, the last time Edith and I worked together to put that up, Edith worked, I was there to help. Um, Edith, do you need any more assistance than me, or you, it's... Really, I will have it just like last time. It's um, actually laid out on my kitchen table right now, so okay. it will be, you know... All right, so the idea here was to change the change the display materials to something of a winter theme and yeah. we thought hey why not do the same thing as our newsletter so that there might be some overlapping interest in that yes. uh, so you and i can just get together i guess whenever i'll check in and see um i'm thinking more later towards the end of the month than okay. in the middle of the so i just need to get it done now because there is no one more stressed and busy than a church organist when you get into Advent. <laughs> oh, yes, that's for sure. I have, uh, you know, three Christmas Eve services with about four different soloists each. Oh, boy. The, and, <laughs> so, yeah, get it done now. I'm trying so to get it done so that it about. can be put up very quickly, 1st of December, whatever, you okay. know. Okay, I think that would be a good time frame. Yeah. I'll make sure that we have the key and, you know, all the other things that we need to go through. I'll check in with uh, Michelle uh, just to make enough. sure. When we get, get closer in, but I'm finished. I'm really getting it ready to go now, and I will tuck it away until it's time to put it up. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Uh, going back to the newsletters for just a moment here in January, we haven't identified a topic. We haven't even done a projects plan. Um, I do want to talk about that tonight. Um, I've got some ideas. Uh, I'm sure you do too. Maybe what I should do is just put send out a little something about ideas and then you could uh, you know add them to the sm small little short list that I have of ideas for newsletter topics because January is coming up and um, you know December is going to be you know hectic as usual and we will need to have the newsletter article for January's newsletter by the end of December probably um, by the third week in December. So we need to talk about that a little bit and um, maybe we can just do that online. It's getting late already and I don't wanna keep us here too long. All right, moving to down our agenda, information on a session with the code enforcement officer. Haven't had a chance to talk to Chris. I know he's busy. And my thinking is, is that if this happens, probably it's not gonna happen until 2021. And I don't know what the time frame will be um, given so many you know, questions that we don't have answers for at this time because of COVID. So um, I would suggest that we take this off of our agenda for this year. And if we wanna add it then for two, 2021, we can do that in our projects plan. The display case we talked about. Okay, projects plan. I really want to get into that for a few minutes. If, Eric, if you could just bring up the, um, the uh, implementation table. John sent the implementation table, uh, the update for the, uh, the updated one. I hope that you had kind of looked through it. I updated it, but I wanted your feedback. It's in draft form. 
Um, you'll find it on our, yeah, there it is. Okay. So if you haven't seen it, it's on our, our web page and it is in draft form. And um, I'm not going to go through everything here, but um, there are certain areas that we've covered sort of well this year and some things we haven't. But I had some questions regarding what you guys want to get into next year. Remember, I'm not going to be with you in January. So I really would like to hear from you regarding what it is you guys would like to do for next year so that we can put it on a plan that we have to give to the town before their organizational meeting on, on January the 11th. So we have a little bit of time here, um, you know, the next month and a half or so, um, but we do need to get it done so that it, it can go to them and then you can do whatever you want to. Your, your new chair is probably gonna have his or her own ideas about what's going on. But did anybody have any corrections after you read through this draft? Is there anything we need to add? Um, language that needs to be changed. Remember, this is our um, the basis for our annual report is the things that we have done this year. So if I missed anything about what we've done, please remind uh, me, me or and put it in there. Um, anything like that from anybody? Did you get a chance to go through it and anything stand out? Things stood out. Okay, so what I will do then, I have down here about half a dozen opportunities, I think, for um, projects next year. Some of them are, you know, you can do whatever you want to with them. It can be a newsletter just as a project, or it can be whether we're going to have person-to-person -person projects, I don't know, but we might want to consider doing another one of those um, webinars for, you know, other departments, like we did with the invasive species for the highway department, and um, just do our own kind of thing like that. So there's a couple of things here that not not a whole lot because I don't really know exactly how the year will go, but. I will make a list of those. I'll send them to you and then you can respond in some way, please. Okay. Joyce, is there, can you give us any update on who our chairman might be or is the town looking for new members? What, what's the story? Okay, uh, that's on our agenda. <laughs> but- oh, oh, sorry, I didn't mean I to jump it now. I can do it now since you asked the question. My last conversation, uh, by the way, Doug's dad passed away and he hasn't been available um, recently. And I don't know, Eric, do you know when he might be returning or? Hello, Eric? Um, I would think next week. Next week sometime, okay. Um, so we haven't been able to firm up anything except that there will be two vacancies on the planning on the uh, Environmental Conservation Board in 2021. Kim has also decided that it's time for her to do something new. And so she's moving on as am I. Uh, Justin's uh, term is up also at the end of 2020. And he has decided that he would like to stay on the planning board and he is offering that to the, to the town board. Um, so that's what will happen with that. Um, there will be two vacancies that will need to be filled. And the next thing that has to happen is that, and the reason why it's been delayed a little bit is because there's some things happening in the CIC with needing to have volunteers also on some perhaps teams or whatever. Anyway, a notice has to go out uh, requesting letters of interest uh, for the ECB and any other committees and things you know, that are gonna happen. When we get those resumes or letters of interest, then uh, Doug has asked that the ECB do what we did last time when we filled our vacancy, and that is to interview the applicants. So in order for us or for you guys or you know for the ECB to have a chair and to fill that other vacancy, 
by their organizational meeting, which is January the 11th. Uh, we will have to be interviewing in December so that we can get our recommendation to them uh, by their organizational meeting on that date. So that basically is where we are. And um, if, you have, if you have friends or family that feel like they would love to, to join the ECB, please let them know. And hopefully, I don't know, I just don't know when that notice will go out. I, I haven't, I don't have a clue. I tried to get a hold of Sarah this afternoon, but I was having some uh, problems with receiving emails. I sent one to her, but I didn't get any response back to her, but uh, from her. So I'm not quite so sure, but we'll keep you updated as when we have new information. Okay. So the projects plan, we're going to, I'm going to put that something together. I'm going to send it out to you and you can add, subtract, say, I don't like it, but remember, these are your ideas for next year. Um, that's the way that it'll work. And the other thing we'll send out is a newsletter like we did last year. Everybody participated in, uh, you know, presenting a, a newsletter article. And so we have this little, uh, you know, uh, schedule. So we'll put out one of those and you can sign up for that. And at least we're going to keep the ball rolling as far as long as we can here. All right. Um, moving right along here, the adoption of the natural resource inventory, um, like our um, referral today from the town board, their um, public hearing is going to be November the 16th. So hopefully that will all take place. Once that takes place and it is adopted, then we're going to have a training that we have always wanted, uh, which will help us to understand, uh, you know, how we can use this new NRI to develop our advisory reports so that Sarah Linda can get some relief. <laughs> I'm sure she'd appreciate it. Yay, I know she's raising her hands. Yay, yay, yay. Okay, um, and um, I'll also include in the projects plan the priorities from the NRI, and we can decide if we want to do any of those or not. There, some of these are very quick and wouldn't take us very much time to do at all. Um, identifying locations of abandoned wells. I know Edith told us that Soil and Water has this information already, so it's just making a phone call and, and not all of it, but some of it. Yeah. Okay. And so whatever we need, but the main part will be how we're going to have to interact with uh, the, the GIS department, you know, information services at the county to give them this information. So that's the part that I know how to do that. Maybe you, did, you know how to do that, but that'll be nice. It'll be the watershed inspector who will have the information. Oh, watershed inspector. Okay. Okay. Well, that's with that. The annual report, like I said, I'm waiting to for the update for the implementa implementation table to be able to, you know, compose um, the annual report. And that will be also a draft copy for you in December at our next meeting. And then we can, once we approve that, then we can send that on to the board. That really doesn't have to be done by December 31st, by the time they get that. Okay, let's see here. I do have a question though that we need to think about, and I wanted to check in with Doug before I really asked this question, but it's because I think he holds the answer for us, but remember when the last couple of years at the end of the year the town always had some unexpended funds and we always sent a recommendation and request to the town board to provide some funding for open space this year i don't know what in the world um I would imagine we don't have any unexpended funds, so I don't think that's going to be an option for us to make that recommendation because it is one of the criteria in the implement, implement, implementation table for us to be on top of that so that we keep making sure that there are you know, commitments to the open space capital funds. 
So we'll get that information from him, see what he has to say about it. Maybe this year that's not an option for us, but maybe we'll think of something else. I, I don't know. Uh, for those of you who need to finish up your training credits, um, you will have to have those done by the end of the year. Um, they must be completed by 1231. And here is an option for you. The, let me find it here. Forecasters of Watershed Health, Birds of the Canandaigua Lake Watershed. It's a webinar on November the 11th. Um, it's sponsored by the CLWA, the Watershed Association. It's at 11 o'clock. And I think, is it on our agenda, Tom? I mean, uh, John? Yes, it's on the agenda, page five. Okay, I thought it was, but then I didn't know for sure. Um, anyway, that, I don't know how many, how long it's gonna be, but at least, you know, you can get a credit and a half or two credits. I know that some of you don't even, don't need them, but some of you do, just making that um, kind of, um, you know, remark. I signed up for it, even though I don't need the credits. It looked really interesting. And John, no, I've already good. signed up for it too. I wanna to know what that's all. I bet you Sarah Linda already has too. <laughs> okay, well, we are almost at the end of our time here, but I do want to go to the member reports. And um, just to let you know, and the Enviro and environmental committee um, that I was on, I have also relieve myself of that responsibility so I'm no longer on that uh, team and our natural resource so we can take that off of our agenda and the natural resource inventory updates um, I think we can take that off our agenda too that team has has been you know disbanded so the uh, CIC the citizens implementation committee representatives Pat is there anything there that you would like to uh, let the board know what's been happening well, there with CIC. We were starting, the last meeting, we were starting our uh, goals, speaking about our upcoming goals. And uh, I'm not sure how many of them, there might be a dozen, um, but we were focusing on the first four. Well, those were the goals for agriculture. Those were the comprehensive um, plan goans, yeah, yeah, that we're comprehensive reviewing. Comprehensive plans, visions, and goals. We decided to all uh, read them over and see if we had any further input. Um, the first one we were talking about was agriculture, and the next one was natural environment. And I believe we're going to focus on the next two uh, cultural and historic resources and parks and recreation. There's 11 so of them. We're just reviewing them um, individually to see if we have further comments. So that's the work of the CIC yeah. right now. Okay, local history team, Sarah uh, Linda, what's going on? Uh, nothing much new to report. Nothing? Well, you are gonna, aren't you gonna be looking at the comprehensive plan? We just looked at the cultural and, and historic things, so it's mm -hmm. it's in the wakes now. Yes, we're we're going to do that at the December meeting. Okay. Okay, town uh, tree board. Gary, Edith, um, did you go? What's happening? Yes, I did. Dennis Brewer and I and Dan Madison, Marion. <laughs> Marion, sorry. <laughs> I should have my notes. <laughs> I can have a heck of a time with this name. We toured Outhouse Park, the grounds around the town hall, and Blue Heron Park, examining the trees and seeing what the conditions were. A number of them around the town hall need to be removed. The ash trees are dead. Oh. And they simply need to be replaced with something that is going to be less uh, subject to damage by insects. Uh, we did examine several, made some recommendations about the pear trees that need some strengthening cables in the canopy, keep them from splitting. Outhouse Park, we... Uh, 
looked at some cultural practices there. Many, most of the trees and shrubs had been surrounded by very heavy grade plastic covered with uh, mulch. And <laughs> well, the plastic has been very tight around the trunk of the trees. The trees are oh, swelling boy. of it. There were girdling oh, ropes. No. Yes. I'm so uh, glad you guys are looking at these trees. It's just, oh, it's just such a pity that they've just been not looked at for so long from the very beginning, really. He ran to his pickup to get a knife. Yeah. <laughs> I, emergency surgery. <laughs> yeah. I was very distressed. It, it was distressing. The tree, yeah. you know, the one we were looking at first, the trunk was splitting because it was swelling up above this plastic. The ground beneath the plastic was completely dry, even though it had been raining. Um, I did go back to Outhouse Park today, and <laughs> apparently the report was shared because the plastic has been removed. Oh, good. On the, quite a number of them. As you know, oh, the death there has been horrendous. Yeah. Um, possibly there is plow pan below the uh, surface there since this was ag field for a long time and the mm. soil was fairly clay so um time will tell whether this is going to be you know it is floodplain for sucker brook also yeah right so there are some things some species that probably shouldn't be planted there because they suffer from both drought and inundation. Well, I'm so glad that we have a tree board who is on top of these things. I'm a, I can sleep easier at night now. Yes, well. And thank you for participating and, and so leading And we did recommend watering during dry periods, the watering at Miller Park has been a huge problem. They did have the gator bags mm -hmm. that were supposed to drip, but they were not filled this oh. year. Oh, I think personnel, uh, you know, we don't, we haven't had a full complement this year. I mean, I, you know, it's probably what's going to suffer those kinds of labors. It's far more cost effective to water the trees you have planted than to have to replace them. Yeah, it's true. In about a year, you see the effects of non-watering. Yeah. They don't look so bad the first year, but they die the second. Yeah. So that went into the report and- uh, Well, good. And you can read these reports. Oh, do you have a, do you have a page yet or a, on the website, tree board? I don't think so. I don't think so either. I haven't seen one yet. I think yeah. the report was supposed to be given to the CIC, but uh, uh, I don't remember that. I tie, I write it up and give it to Dennis and to Dan and yeah. Dennis is the chair. So he, he is the one who sits it on. I don't know. Well, thank you for the information and keeping us abreast of what's going on with our trees in the town. We're trying. Okay, uh, that is the end of our Just agenda. Briefly, can, oh, sure. I was just going to talk about the uh, conservation subdivision ordinance. Uh, oh, okay. A brief update. We we don't have a draft just yet, but we had met um, recently, and the the big change, I guess, is to add more items, kind of to the constrained lands. Um, or like high priority lands, creating something of a hierarchy of um, lands to be preserved, and then more clearly um, stating how to preserve them, that they do need to be preserved. Um, that's really it so far. Um, I think the next meeting and what um, Barb will have for us then is maybe a bit more substantial. 
Uh, we're still waiting on a process for smaller subdivisions um, that maybe don't don't really need to go through the two-phase project, but could still benefit from a conservation approach. Well, good. I'm glad that Labella and Barb are uh, is working with the with the conservation easement team because of her expertise with everything that she's done in the town will be invaluable for you, actually. Okay. Anything else that anybody has? All right. Have a good dinner and have a good evening. Um, I move to adjourn. I will second. All those in favor? Oh yes. Aye. Aye. Uh, I can't see this, but did Justin ever uh, ever uh, join us, Eric? No. I, Justin never did. No. Okay. All right. Um, that's it for now. We'll see you in December. See y'all. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.